Hello friends, this video on mechanical properties of fluids part 21 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from part 1 to part 20 before going ahead with part 21. Solve certain problems. Let us look at problem 1. It asks, calculate the velocity of emergence of a liquid from a hole in the side of a white cell 15 cm below the liquid surface. So let us first visualize what the question is asking. It asks, it asks for the velocity of emergence of a liquid from a hole in the side of a white cell. So let us draw a cell. Let us suppose this is a cell. Let us suppose there is a small hole, let us say this, which is 15 cm below the liquid surface. Now let us suppose this is the liquid surface. So this distance is 15 cm. So we have to calculate the velocity of emergence. So what is that law or what is the theorem that we will apply here? So which, which law talks about the velocity of emergence of a liquid from a small hole? It is nothing but the Torricelli's theorem. So we will make use of Torricelli's theorem. Torricelli's theorem states that the velocity with which a liquid emerges from a hole is equal to root over 2gh. Why 2gh? Because in this case the cell is open to atmosphere, right? So v is equal to root over 2gh. So we will say root over 2 into g is acceleration due to gravity that is 9.8 meter per second square and h is 15 centimeters. So 15 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters. So this meter per second. So this comes out to be 1.7 meter per second. So this is the velocity with which the liquid will be emerged from the side of this white cell. So I hope you understood why we used this formula because in this scale it, it says that it, it talks about a cell and this cell is open to as the cell is open to atmosphere so we are applying the Torricelli's theorem. And we are assuming that P is equal to PA. If you go back and look at Torricelli's theorem, you say you see that this scenario arises when the object is open to atmosphere. Now let us look at the next problem. The problem says water flows through a horizontal pipeline of varying cross section. That means it is somewhat of the sort. It is a pipeline of varying cross section. So the cross sectional area is different and it is a horizontal pipeline. If the pressure of water equals 6 cm of mercury at a point where the velocity of flow is 30 cm per second, what is the pressure at another point where the velocity of flow is 50 cm per second? Let us consider two points P1 and P2. Or let us consider these two points as R1 and R2. Now according to question, let us suppose at R1. At R1, the velocity is V1 which is given as 30 cm per second. So we can say this is equal to 0 0.3 meter per second. And what is the pressure at this point? The pressure at this point P1 is equal to h rho g because it is given as 6 centimeters of mercury so it is h rho g so h is 6 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters rho is density of mercury density of mercury is 13600 kg per meter cube so please note that density of mercury is equal to 13600 kg per meter cube so this is density of mercury into g is 9.8 meter per second square. So this comes out to be 7997 newton per meter square. So the velocity and the pressure at R1 are as follows. 
Now let us look at the second point at point R2. At R2 the velocity V2 is given as 50 cm per second which we can write as 0 0.5 meter per second. So the question asks us to calculate the value of pressure at R2. So how do we calculate that? We will apply Bernoulli's equation. So according to Bernoulli's equation, T plus half rho V square, that is kinetic energy per unit volume, plus rho GH, that is potential energy per unit volume, is equal to constant. Now the question says that the pipeline is horizontal. That means the height of the pipeline remains the same. So in case of horizontal pipeline, we will not consider this term. This term is not considered. Therefore, we will apply only the other two terms. So we can say that P plus P1 plus half rho V1 square should be equal to P2 plus half rho V2 square. So we know the values of V1 and V2, we know the value of rho, we also know the value of P1, so we can calculate the value of P2 from this equation. So just put the value of P1 which is 7997 plus half into rho. What is rho? In this case, rho is the density of the fluid which flows, right? So density, which is the fluid that is flowing? That is water. So density of water is 1000 kg per meter cube. So rho will be 1000 and what is V1? V1 is 0 0.3 whole square. This is equal to P2 plus half into rho that is 1000 into V2 that is 0 0.5 whole square. Now from this equation we find that P2 comes out to be 7917 Newton per meter square. So this is the value of pressure at the point R2. So what did we do? We did nothing very magical. We just used the Bernoulli's equation and put the values which are given in the question in that equation and simply solved it. So this is how we calculated the value of pressure. Now if we, you want to find out the value of pressure in terms of the height in mercury column, we can do that as well. This P2 should be equal to H2 into rho into G where rho is the density of mercury. So this will be equal to H2 into rho is 13600 into 9.8. So, using this, we can say that H2 comes out to be 5.9 cm. So, we can say that the pressure is 5.9 cm of mercury column. So, I hope it is clear to you now that how do we apply the laws and the formulae, the equations which we studied till which we studied so far, how do we apply them to solve problems? Now, let us go ahead and look at the third problem. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.